Hey guys, how you doing? Today's video is going to be a little bit different than we usually do. Uh, I'm actually going to be fighting a real life fighter pilot in this video. His name is Ate and he has a YouTube channel which I will link in the comment section and the video description below. And uh, he is a real life or was formerly a real life French Rafale pilot. And so he's a very nice guy. He reached out and he wanted to make a video and stuff. And I was like, hell yeah, we'll make a video. That sounds like a great idea. So the way that we're going to break this video down is I'm going to do a quick introduction with him where he's going to talk about his life and what he's done and his accomplishments and all that stuff. And then we're going to jump right into the fights because that's what everybody wants to, uh, to see, I'm sure. I'm going to dogfight him. And uh, then when that's finished, I'm going to talk to him a little bit about his thoughts between uh, being a, a DCS guy and what it takes to jump into a real aircraft and would a DCS player be able to do that or not. And after that, we'll do a tack view review just for fun. All right, guys, let's get started with the video. All right, Ate, go ahead and give everybody a little introduction. Tell us about who you are, what you've done, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, hi, I'm um, Ate. Ate is my cold sign. I'm a French and Canadian, so I'm dual citizen. My mom was born in Montreal, my dad in France. He was a, a French Air Force officer. And at 19, after a small career in uh, sports, triathlon and duathlon and um, precision flying, I joined the Navy, the French Navy. I got my training in the U.S., uh, two and a half years flying T-34 and then T-45, the so Goshawk, landed on the Truman and then I uh, was sent back to France, flew Super Etendard from the French aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle and later I uh, was a Rafale pilot, flew in air shows with the French Navy, uh, deployed in Iraq 2016 and uh, 15 and I served as a subject matter expert giving like keynotes, and conferences to Dassault and all the, the Rafale manufacturer before leaving the service to fly for a major in, uh, in North America. <laughs> and uh, I got selected to fly the Boeing 737 MAX. So I had a lot of time on my hands and I started a career in, um, in consulting and corporate training uh, using flight simulation and giving keynotes and uh, stuff like that uh, all around the world. So now I, I live in France. I'm moving to Germany in a month, but I mostly work in Canada. So I spend a lot of time in air crafts. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. Very nice. And when you add that up, uh, everything together, how many years would you say that you have in military aviation experience, all that stuff? Yeah. Uh, so I started flying at 14. I got my first private, I mean, um, what we call brevet base in France. Uh, the first solo authorization at 15, joined the Navy at 19, served uh, officially 13 years, including eight years in frontline squadrons. And I've got 18 years in aviation, uh, 2,500 hours, 1,900 on fast jets, and 200 landing on a boat um, day and night, both on Super E and uh, Rafale. Very cool, man. Very cool. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Let's do some fights. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, this should be an interesting fight. I'm assuming he's going to be a lot more aggressive than uh, most people I fight with. Um, so here we go for the merge. Now, just because a guy used to be a real pilot doesn't mean that in DCS he will necessarily be amazing. He's got to get used to DCS, and then he'll be amazing. Um, that's something we'll talk about after all the dogfights. And uh, so we'll see how this plays out here. And... There's the merge. I'm going to go for keeping a high speed here, and I'm going to try to raid around him. He's going for the vertical, and that's most likely to find Tally on me. It's very easy to do that. And he's coming around. He's looks like he's going to try to get nose on here, take a very high aspect shot as he flies by behind me. If I keep my speed up, it should be a very difficult shot for him. And there it is. It's going to fall short. So my only real chance here is the fact that Ate is maybe not completely used to the 
um, aerodynamics of DCS. A lot of real pilots say that you gain speed too slowly and you lose it too quickly. And so that's really the only shot I got here of maybe beating him. And once he figures that out though, which I don't think will take him long, uh, then it's going to be bad news bears for me. And so here we are. I'm just trying to keep a high speed here and try to raid around him if possible. You can see he's dumped his nose. He's trying to get that speed back, which he cashed in when he took that shot on me. He pulled lead and tried to hit me. And so here I'm just, I'm staying above him because he keeps trying to point his nose at me which is what a delta wing guy would do because they have the authority to do that and also he's very aggressive you know much more aggressive than i'm used to so i'm being forced to play pretty defensively here i'm just trying to stay above him almost the entire time down at the deck um, once i get him down to the deck it's possible i'll be able to rate fight him and beat him there but uh, we're pretty neutral as we come down here and we're going to transition to the deck and so I see wing vapors coming off his aircraft, which means he's pulling pretty hard. Might be getting a little bit slower there. I'm keeping my energy, my speed up here. And now I'm coming around the circle. Alright, so at this point I'm seeing a lot of winning cues. I'm starting to come around. And you can see he's struggling with the uh, the speed in the Hornet there. And there's the kill. Alright, got lucky with that one. I think he's going to start figuring it out now. Whew. So if you're wondering why Ate is fighting in the Hornet and not the French Mirage, it's because he had to update his game to open beta so that we could do this fight and he didn't have enough space as far as I remember to install the Mirage. Now if you guys want to see another video uh, with him in a Mirage kicking my ass, uh, let me know in the comments section, we can probably arrange that. I don't think that would be too big of a deal. And so once again, same merge, uh, he goes for the vertical, that's going to really help him to find me, to get tally on me. And then he'll just build up his speed, try to come in for the kill. He's very aggressive in the first, uh, you know, first turn. He just tries to get his nose on you and kill you, and it's, it's kind of scary. And so now he's moving up behind me, I'm getting a whole lot of losing cues here. <laughs> And he's got his nose down, he's building up his speed. He's got me pretty defensive at this point. I told you once he figures out the speed, man, I'm <laughs> I'm in trouble. And I think he figured it out real quick. <laughs> and so I'm dumping my nose, trying to keep my speed up as I pull hard through these turns. Just trying to keep his nose on lag here so he can't point it at me and kill me. Once again, I'm going to try to drag this fight to the ground. And there's some rounds coming in. Lucky to not get hit by those. So once again, you can see the nose down attitude of his Hornet. 
He's building up his speed again. He cashed in a little bit to get those shots off. Falling short. You can see the wing vapor is coming off as he pulls harder. And so I'm pretty fast here. I'm trying to get it down to about 360-ish. That'll be good. Altitude. Look at that nose. He keeps trying to point it at me. Pulling him into that raid fight. He's figured it out, man. <laughs> he figured it out. So now he knows the speeds of the Hornet, and uh, he's just glued back there. I'm going to have to jink when he points his nose at me. I'm going to maneuver out of plane when I see the bottom of his aircraft and him pulling lead. I'm going to have to watch for that. And so we're coming around the circle. He, I'm not able to get him off me at all. And he's also not able to point his nose at me. This is what happens when you have two of the exact same aircraft. Uh, and so what he's going to have to start doing is offsetting the circle and trying to get a high aspect shot off at me, which is what he's doing there with the climb. So he's climbing up and he's going to pull hard through the top and he's going to come down. Here comes the shot, looking for the lead, maneuver out of plane. Survive, good. Really lucky to have survived that one. It was like fractions of seconds, man. That was scary. And uh, so I'm telling you, man, he's so aggressive, and it's really not what I'm used to fighting. So it's it's got me. Uh, it's throwing me for a curveball. Oh, man, he just hit me. Great. Oh shit. Alright guys, here we go with round three. So, you know, I've often said that a real pilot who is used to DCS is the most dangerous thing that uh, you can face in the world of DCS. And that's because of this exact thing. They already obviously understand the fundamentals of BFM and, you know, how to maneuver their aircraft and all that stuff. And the second, so they don't have to learn all that stuff. And the second they figure out how aircraft feel in DCS and they get used to that, then that's it you know they're so dangerous because they already understand all the fundamentals and the basics here um, so here we go again he is once again in the high high position he went for the vertical and he's coming back around so you can see i'm kind of managing to negate that uh high alpha shot he likes to take as he whips by um, so i've solved that problem but you know i'm sure he can create a million more for me here and so here he comes. Looks like he might try to get another couple of rounds off here. Whoa! Damn, he's aggressive. It takes a certain level of skill to take that you know, high speed, high aspect shot as you rip by somebody and almost hit them. Like, I'm pretty sure I survived that by like centimeters, man. Um, so very scary, very scary. And so once again, my tactic is to just keep my speed in the 360 range. And I just really want to drag him down to the ground. That seems to be my, my best option of uh, defeating him. As long as he has altitude to play with and he has the ability to dump his nose to regain speed, uh, I'm in very big trouble. Altitude. Now here I've actually out, I've raided around him, but then he uh, I pulled a little too hard on the stick there and kind of gave up my advantage. And now he's going to try to turn in front of me. And he's going to try to do a head-on pass. I can probably altitude. get the kill here. Altitude. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, that was luck, but still feels good.
guys. One last fight here. And we'll see how this plays out. Last round. Um, so, I, you know, we often talk about not reversing turns in front of your bandit, but he timed that almost perfectly. Like, just a couple more seconds, a couple more degrees per second, he would have been nose-on with me. Um, and that is the difference between a real pilot and a guy who just plays DCS. They can time those things so perfectly that something that looks like a mistake to you is how they kill you and it's quite impressive actually if i'm being honest so once again we're in the uh he went for the vertical and he's coming around behind me look at how quick he gets behind me man like i'm not used to somebody getting on my ass like that it's actually really impressive how quickly he picked up on this kind of stuff now i know it's not the first time that he's playing dcs you know he's played dcs in the past but there's no way he has as many hours as i do in it but here he is kicking my ass right so this goes with my theory that if you're a real pilot you know and you come into dcs you're just a different kind of animal you know you're so much better and so you can see here he's got me defensive i dump my nose way too hard i give him all kinds of angles there and yeah see look at that could he ask for a better position? You know? God damn it. Alright, so I'm gonna try to see if I can transition this into some sort of vertical fight. And uh, very bad, because now I'm too slow across the top. Gonna be an easy target. Yep, see there. <laughs> it's a crazy hit. It's another high aspect shot. And it's the AOA of the Hornet that really allows him to do that stuff, and he puts it to really good use. And my radar is broken now. Great. So I gotta shoot blind here and I'm gonna miss. Fantastic, that was the only chance I'm ever gonna get in this round, I'm pretty sure. Now I have a broken radar, and there's the shot. Oh god. Yep, there we go. <laughs> How do you feel about this idea that um, a, a pilot or somebody in DCS who plays DCS can all of a sudden jump into a plane and they'll be as good as they are in DCS? Because in my experience, that's definitely not the case. And uh, a lot of pilots come to DCS and they're not very good until they get used to it. And then they become the most dangerous thing that uh, you can fight in DCS as somebody who's used to DCS and is a real pilot. But uh, not being used to DCS usually results in the DCS player killing the real pilot. But you shouldn't get that delusion that you're better than that guy because you killed him in DCS, right? Two different things entirely. How do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so what I feel is, uh, first of all, um, DCS is not the real thing. I like to say flight simulation nowadays is 80 to 85% of the real deal because um, you're missing g-force all that stuff but in, in terms of of tactics all that stuff all the numbers are extremely off but uh, uh, players that plays dcs you get it, it, most of them have a good understanding and thanks to channel yeah, curious, i'm trying to share some stuff on my channel as well but not exactly around dcs but more big picture but the thing is it is great to be able to apply it in the flight simulation at home. It is something extremely different to be dog fighting and moving your neck at eight, nine, ten Gs. It, it is just a complete different world. Uh, add to that the pressure of, hey, you're going to do a real combat mission. And what's going to get you is all the small stuff around. I mean, have you heard about a lot of guys killing themselves, dog fighting? No. People kill themselves on all the admin parts, taking all, all that stuff. And that's really what makes a real pilot a real pilot is the ability to, um, to have discipline, 
beyond the tactical phase. You, you need discipline all the time. And I think that's a skill that isn't really worked in DCS because um, it's not fun. And I think that's one of the big, the big, big point is that it's uh, a real pilot is all about discipline. In the French Navy, we say that a disciplined pilot is worth a gifted pilot. And, and all that discipline takes years to build. It's something very specific. And I think that that might kill people used to DCS in the real world. Um, other than that, yes, uh, a real fighter pilot switching to DCS. I mean, the flight models aren't exactly the same. I was having a, a tough time finding the numbers because in terms of joystick position, it's really different. But it's no excuse because we have to adapt. And what makes a fighter pilot is someone that has the ability to adapt extremely fast and um, that will be able to follow the, the pipeline, the curriculum extremely fast. So I think the big point is when you fly against a real pilot in DCS and my dad was an Air Force pilot, I put him in DCS, he's dead in like five seconds. I put him in VR, he puked after 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and he was... A, it was a 330 captain, he was an exchange officer, display pilot for the Epsilon, I mean, nothing to say. But, but it's like that, it is not the same. He, he has always been sick in simulators, yet he was a very proficient pilot. So it's just not the same. I don't, I don't want to tell DCS players that they couldn't make him in a real jet. I just want to emphasize the fact that real, fine, real fire pilot stuff is not flying duck fighting all day. It's just maybe 1% of her time and flight time throughout the year. What makes a fighter pilot is all the surroundings. And uh, and yes, <laughs> so uh, DCS is great. It's awesome, but it's not the real thing. And uh, maybe one day it will become closer. But honestly, I think it's better not to be pulling 10 Gs because we would be exhausted by now. And <laughs> I had a workout just before. So. <laughs> but, but that's something good that you try. I, I just did the Navy physical training test before because I had a challenge with my followers on instagram but <laughs> um go do a big workout during summer season and then do a dog fighting this yes and you will start already seeing a, a small difference <laughs> yeah i uh i don't know i think the the average dcs player they are more um knowledgeable than your average person on the street but to sit there and think that you're at the same level as a real pilot like sure. if i put you in a in a jet today you'd be able to take on a real pilot. I think there are a very small portion of the population in DCS who do believe that to be true. And uh, I, I think they're very wrong. Um, now, if you go mm -hmm. and you get the training, then you know it's a whole different story, but you, you can't just go from DCS to a real plane and think that you're gonna beat a real pilot. That's just ridiculous. I think it's interesting. Um, what makes a fighter pilot a fighter pilot, what makes a captain is captain, is the humility to think Everybody else is better than him. Um, there is a dichotomy where you have to be extremely self-confident to be in charge of an aircraft like that. Yet, you have to be extremely humble because you know you don't know everything. And you have to emphasize the beginner mindset at all time. That's why debriefing is so important in the military. That's why uh, it saves life in aviation. But where I want to go is somebody that walked to me and said, hey, I could do that. I'm like... Great, but just by the fact you think so boldly you can do it, proves me you don't have the right mindset to be trustworthy of a $100 million aircraft. That's, that's basically it. Uh, you really need this. I mean, when we got in touch, uh, I mean, if you put me against DC or players, there's no way I should win. I mean, it's, you know, the 10,000 rules. I'm not training DCS and it's not my world. So even though I got the training, all that stuff, it's not my world. And I know it, I didn't came to you and say, hey, I'm gonna kill you. I told you once today, I know for a fact this time I'm going to kill you, and I did it, but that's the only time I did. I, I, I verbalized it. The other time, I, I, I'm never going to come on front and say, hey, that's, what's, that's what the outcome is, is going to be, because I have a professional credibility, and I, I have this beginner mindset, and I know you're going to teach me some stuff. You taught me how to use the uh, HMV, all that stuff, and, and, and it's just how pilots are, and you don't make it very far into this business if you think you know everything better than everyone else. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a that's a great point, man. Um, well, listen, man, I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot of stuff. Uh, I really appreciate you coming out and doing this. Um, 
I'm sorry that I missed your first comment. I went back like a week later and I was like, oh shit, that was him. Like, yeah. So that's my bad. No worries. Uh, and listen, I think the, the channel is going to love this. And I think we should maybe try to do it again in the future sometime. I think people would really like sure. it. Sure. With pleasure. Maybe with Mirage 2000 next time. And yeah. it, maybe depending on the comments you get, if they want some type of scenario or some things they want, me to teach you something very specific we can we can go with what your community wants will be with great pleasure and i have to say uh we're recording that on bastille day so the french national holiday which is even more awesome <laughs> so it's uh it's um yeah it's like uh, july 4th in the us oh it's uh like independence 14th of july we play it, uh, exactly bastille days we basically um took down our king and cut his head <laughs> oh, is that, what, was that a Louis, yeah, Louis the Sixteen? Was it? Yeah, that's correct. So yeah, he was, I mean, we cut his head a couple of weeks later, and his wife as well. Uh, but we do celebrate that in French while eating baguette. It's very French. Right, very... <laughs> <laughs> while eating a baguette, awesome. All right, brother. Well, uh, listen. Go enjoy your day. Enjoy your Thank dinner. You. And uh, I had a great time. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Fly safe. Thanks. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye. All right, guys, so we'll go ahead and review this tag view here. Um, I don't want to do too many tag views because this video is already pretty long. Um, but this is one of the tag views where Ate beats me. And I just want to use this one because it shows really this was towards the end of our fightings uh, towards the end. I think it was like the second or last fight or something. And he by this point, he's got a pretty good handle of DCS. And how things feel and he adapts very quickly as you heard him say it's all about adapting so um, this is a really good example it shows you how well he just sticks back there once he's in a good position and manages his energy and all that stuff um, so he goes for the vertical because I think he may have mentioned it in the video or he may have just told me um, but here he goes for the vertical because it allows him to get a quick tally in really any direction whatever I do if I climb he'll see that if I dive he'll see that the, just the high vertical is the best position for that um, a lot of people they advise against this but if you're good at your energy management I don't see any issue with it and you can see here why um, what that means because he, he goes up he gets his tally and then he starts to work on getting his energy state back and so I'm over here I'm trying not to pull too hard on the stick and sitting at an indicator of about 440 is honestly probably a little fast and how he ends up look at how he cuts across i started to drop the nose a little bit because i'm just trying to you know get out of plane a little bit so he can't get a clear shot and that works enough to get him to not shoot there but you can see now he's just <laughs> just right back there and uh he's in a good position there he's sitting at a truer speed of 430 um, and I'm sitting at 454 so his indicated is probably about 360 so he's got some nice speed there and you can tell here he's not pulling too hard he's just trying to cons uh, conserve that as much as possible and so am I so I'm dropping my nose here and I'm at this point I'm kind of hoping that he doesn't have the numbers down correctly um, in terms of max rate speeds and all that kind of stuff and that I can maybe outrate him in this circle because I'm like you know I'm probably more used to the Hornet than he is but you can see here that although I've definitely got more hours in the Hornet than he does in DCS you can see that he's glued back there perfectly right he's he's adapted he understands the speeds he already figured it out in like two or three fights and he's good to go and look at that shot look he did not get hit there man and so at this point I'm like holy crap <laughs> So I started dumping the nose in order to make myself faster because I'm like the only chance I got like at this point I'm in a state of panic, you know, and I'm like I got to get down on the ground because at the ground I can beat him It's my best chance, you know, maybe if I have a chance it's down there and so I start to dive and uh, I'm going down there as quick as I can having dove like that I've given him all kinds of angles and he starts to come up behind and 
we'll see here as we get down I'm indicated a 440 because I had to dump my nose and uh, I picked up a little bit more speed than I would have liked and you can see he's sitting at an indicated of 380 which actually probably puts his speed around the 200 um, so he might be a little bit slow here for the deck transition like if he was to pull hard to try to get lead here he would and he didn't get the kill if he got the kill he's good if not he could be in trouble because he was a little slow but uh, you can see some of that um, speeds coming back and so here I'm trying to out I'm trying to outrate him man I'm doing my best here and it's not really working I am a little too fast to be fair um, I want to be sitting around 360 and I'm sitting more look at this a t decrease per second of 23.9 he's getting 21.8 so he's doing pretty good it's not bad and so here I think is where Ate starts to realize that he is gonna have to change it up because as long as I maintain my rate speed and you know he is pretty much the same we're gonna be neutral through this entire fight so watch him actually go outside the turn circle and start to climb and so what he's doing here is he's offsetting the circles and what that's gonna mean is that when he comes back around it's gonna allow him a high aspect shot and you're gonna see what I mean here in a second and he's coming back around and so you see this look at this circle that he just created looking at top down so you have um, a, a rate fight on the deck would have been me going this way and him right behind me right um, what he has created here is this new circle that's like this and then my circle that's like this so you see it's an offset circle and so what that means is that you know and this is the high aspect shot so when I'm here and he's coming around like this he's gonna get a shot like right here right and he's gonna have the top of my aircraft and he's gonna have to, sh to lead pretty significantly in order to get that shot um, but it is better than just sticking to a guy's ass and hoping that you can outrate him it's a little bit quicker um, could I have offset what he was doing here yes um, by how would I have offset it right here when I see him climb because I visually saw it you know I saw him doing this and right here as he climbed I could have initiated a climb as well and he would have offset the circle and I would have offset my circle the same distance and on the way down when he started coming down um, I would come down as well behind and we would have offset the circle but we would have both offset the same amount so it would have actually been overlapping again and so that's the geometry of that now um, I allow that to happen I don't counter it and as he comes across I'm watching him this was extremely dangerous because as he was coming down he was right in the Sun so I was really struggling to see him and what I'm looking for is underbelly of his aircraft and so that tells me that he's pulling lead right and so what I need to do is an out-of-plane maneuver and you saw it in the video um, the out-of-plane maneuver is the um, little section where you see me just level off the wings pull out of plane and then right when the rounds go underneath me I come right back into the right mech and so that's what you see happening here I'm watching for the lead right as soon as I see the lead I don't wait for the bullets I think I timed this one really well. Usually, uh, most of the time, I'm, I'm actually late on these out of plane maneuvers, but uh, this one I think is timed nicely. And so I see underbelly, and so I pull out. Let me just bring this back a little bit more. So I pull out of it. The rounds go underneath, and I go right back to my my rate fight, back to my circle. Right. So let's have another look at that look at that from Ate's perspective Let's turn off the labels right so there's that and then let's go back to me 
and then right here I kind of take my eyes off him for a second and for some reason um, tack view doesn't register at, at this point I'm just completely defensive and for some reason tack view doesn't register a hit but I definitely got hit like I, I felt the impact um, the aircraft started to fly all weird and my HUD turned off so I know I was hit for sure um, but as to why reg uh, tack view doesn't register as a hit I don't know um, but it doesn't and I die so good kill to Ate so a big thank you to Ate for coming out and doing this video for uh, letting us get to know him introducing himself and all that stuff I had a great time he's a very nice guy um, I look forward to doing more videos with him in the future and uh, you guys should give us suggestions about what you like to see and we'll do our best to try to do that um, big thank you to everybody for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next one and remember that links to Ate's channel are in the comment section and the video description below all right guys take care Thank you.